We're two hitchhikers. We met while hiking Mount Baldy with mutual friends, wasted no time, got engaged on a frozen alpine lake, got hitched, and have been adventuring together since. We're embarking on a new adventure of living big in a tiny home. Let's see how this goes. Adventure awaits. <laughs> The weather has been absolutely gorgeous the last few days. We've just been getting rain on and off and it's been just just perfect. But that hasn't stopped us from staying busy. So Ruben is still over at the fire camp. He is working hard, very long days. In fact, we'll have an update from him here shortly. And I got a jump start on installing the kitchen sink, which is a very big deal. Oh, and we have a potato harvest update for you as well. So let's jump to Ruben and see what he's got going on. So what I'm doing right now is I am caging this brake pod. I'll be able to relieve the spring that is holding in place and change this can. All right, so when I pull on this valve, we're gonna hear, a, or push in this valve, we're gonna hear a lot of air. Now it's bleeding out, bleeding out of this line. And I'll be able to disconnect the other without having a bunch of air blow out. Hooray! Oh my gosh. Now I get to relax my back and my head on the floor. <laughs> We're building air right now it means that it's on and the air compressor is putting air into these tanks right here. And once these tanks reach about 100 PSI, it'll actuate the brake pods, these things. And then I'll be able to test my work. She's holding air. All right, come on, get in your home. All right, set the parking brake. She's good. Now let's start the sink. First thing I need to do is measure the sink basin area. edge of the hole saw is going to be right there. Okay. So it's barely going to touch like that. But I have to use the hole saw. I can't just use a drill. No, hole saw. Okay. You can do the hole saw. And then once you have this hole right here, your gangbusters, you get to just follow this line and have something underneath. To support it. To support it because it would, whichever corner it, I end up on. Yeah, it's going to tilt and it's going to crack and it's going to take a chunk out. Got it. No pressure. Have a great day at work. I just got off of FaceTiming with Ruben to make sure I put this on correctly. So this hole saw is correct. We did a little test here and I'm using a one and a half inch uh, hole saw essentially to start the cut and then I'm gonna go in with the jigsaw and the battery's charging right now so I have to go get that and attach it. And I've been procrastinating on this this morning because 
This is not just a piece of plywood that I can go and get another piece at the hardware store. This is our countertop. So if I don't get this right, I really mess up our countertop and I really don't want, yeah, anyway, I can't think too much about that. I just have to do it. All right, just to show you really quickly, I've set this up, sorry about that. I've set this up here as a support system. That way when I do the final cutout, uh, it will be supporting the block itself because if I don't have a support here, I risk putting a tear into the wood and it may not be such a big deal in the part that I'm removing, although we would like to repurpose that, but I really don't want a tear in the countertop that is staying here. So uh, this hopefully will help that. And I think I've done everything I can do. I'm totally procrastinating because I don't want to ruin this, but... Whew, all right, gotta do this. Ah, okay, I need to put a hole right here. This is my pilot hole. Ah. <laughs> I have a better vantage point here. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Damage is done. Okay, here's the piece. Whew, I've got this all over me. There's no turning back now, I guess. So now it's on to uh, this part. So I am going to be tracing the inside of this tape. And the reason why I have the tape set on the outside is because that is what I do not want to accidentally tear. And if when you put down painter's tape or, um, and well, basically any kind of tape, it sort of helps to prevent as much splitting on the surface. So hopefully that will give me a cleaner cut. Okay, lesson learned already. So if you do this, I put the pilot hole back here, which in theory sounds great, but I'm right-handed. And for me to start here, I have to use my left hand going this way, which will not work. And if I'm using my right hand, I have to go backwards, but the drill won't fit. I should have started here. That way I can just cut along. I'll figure this out. Well, I managed to figure it out with my left hand, but not without a few sacrifices. That was a sloppy job because I obviously did not know what I was doing. However, I think we're good with the countertop that is staying here. I sacrificed the centerpiece for the sake of learning. Time to test the fit. I did a sloppy job, but this is my first time doing this. So. Okay, it's tight. I don't want to push it all the way in. Okay, it's not all the way in. I'm going to leave it here. I need to send Ruben a picture, but... Okay. <laughs> Well, after many adjustments, initially with the circular saw and then with the sander, I was able to get this to fit in. Now the two tough corners were these ones right here, but it was a lot of back and forth and 
finally got it in. Now I'm not going to set it with the silicone glue today because we thought since the sink is so deep and we have such a shallow amount of room here in the back, it would be easier if we just installed the faucet first and made sure that was all set and ready to go. And then we actually install the sink permanently. So, and it's just as well, because this is not yet hooked up to the piping system. So this is just a uh, four position only, but it feels good that the sink sits properly. The weight of the sink will help to set it in place. And I did not ruin the kitchen cabinet countertop. The pumpkin is showing fruit already. The bees are busy bathing in tons of pollen. The zucchini is gigantic. And the sunflowers are greeting the morning sun. But now it's time to harvest potatoes. Okay, checking. The potatoes should be ready. They have completely died off here. I had to wait a few extra days to see if I could pull these out because we had quite a bit of rain. <laughs> Little one. So I do recall that the russet potatoes were the last ones to take off. So I think that's why these ones were super tiny. They're cute. I've never known russet potatoes to be this small. I don't know if we can eat them this small, but I will look it up and find out. Let's just see what else we get here. So it is important when you're pulling up potatoes to just use your hands because you don't want to bruise the skin or puncture the skin. <laughs> They're so tiny. And you also want to be sure this one may not be good. I'll put that here on the side that you do not wash them when you first harvest them. You keep the dirt on them. The skin needs to harden up and you should only wash them right before you eat them. Which is why when you get potatoes in the grocery store, you always wanna give them a good rinse because they still have some dirt on them. Well, they're not big, but we have a harvest. Cute. So this is how your potatoes grow. got an all right harvest of potatoes. This is actually really cool. Um, white potatoes, red potatoes, and the russet potatoes did not develop very large at all, but we still have a little bit of a harvest. Um, now I think because none of these are big enough uh, that their skins are not going to get thick enough to store for a very long period of time, which is just as well because we don't have a ton, but this was a great learning experience. I think next time I will make it a point to give them much more space. I think that is why we have smaller potatoes, or actually I should hold up smaller potatoes. <laughs> well, family, that wraps up this update. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Caught the bean eaters. <laughs>